Hi everyone, I'm Nick Olivo, and today we're going to see how to use Roll20's Send to Chat reaction. Essentially, what this allows you to do is send commands to chat when one token overlaps with another. So when I move Ronya's token over this token right here, we're going to see that it automatically triggered this Scythe Trap macro that now displays in my chat. Now, this feature is only available in non-legacy games, and it's only available to Roll20 subscribers who have a paid account. So Plus, Pro, or Elite. And if you have a Pro account or higher, you can also use this feature to send mod commands into the chat as well. And we'll see how to do all those things over the course of this video. Before we dive in, I'd just like to thank Roll20 for sponsoring this video. Okay, so here I am in my game, I've got my map set up, I've got my character on my map. And so let's just sort of talk through the basics of how the send to chat reaction works. First thing we need is a token for our character to overlap with. Now you can use whatever kind of tokens you want. What I usually like to do, just for quick and dirty illustrative purposes, is slash r 1d12, and then you can actually drag the die item right onto the map, and then we're just going to pop that right onto the GM layer. And it doesn't really matter what the token looks like because it's on the GM layer and none of my players are ever going to see it. All right, so we're on the GM layer. And now what I'm going to do is double click the token to open up its properties. We're going to go over to the advanced tab and we're going to check send to chat. And that gives you this box here where we can put in whatever chat command we want to run. So let's start out with something very, very simple. We're just going to say slash R. 1d10 and we'll save that okay and now jump back to the token layer and i'm just going to drag ronia's token over that token here and we should see there it goes we rolled 1d10 we got a six all right so obviously that's a very contrived example let's go ahead let's look at something a little bit more interesting so i'm going to swing over my trusty notepad plus plus window here just so things are a little easier to read so here i'm using the default roll template that roll 20 provides to display information about a scythe trap so we see we've got our scythe trap here it makes an attack roll that's 1d20 plus 2 and it's going to deal 1d10 slashing damage and there's a dc 15 deck save that halves the damage all right so if i just copy this and run it as is, you can see this is what the output looks like. So we want to have that show up when our characters move over this token. So I'm just going to copy this code and let's tuck this away. And we're going to replace that 1d10 roll with this. And now we're going to save changes. Okay. And now let's jump back to the token layer and let's move Ronya back over that marker. And so Ronya moves and there we go. We see our Scythe trap has triggered and now our character can take the appropriate action. Now you'll notice that when I move over the token again, the Scythe trap keeps triggering back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Okay. That's because we have this box right here checked automatically reset. So if this is a scythe trap where the blade snaps out of the wall, hits your character and then retracts, this is what you want to do. But if it's something more like a pit trap, then you probably don't want it to automatically reset because you know, you once the pit trap is sprung, your characters kind of see that it's there. So you can uncheck this box and then save the changes and then we move over. The trap triggered once, but now it doesn't trigger anymore. So that's something to know that you can make the reaction fire repeatedly or just one time, depending on how you'd like it to go. Now, the nice thing about this is we can actually get information about the token that triggered the reaction and about the reaction token itself. So bringing back my trusty notepad plus plus window here, let's say we'd like to include the name of the character who triggered the trap in our output here. So we could do that. We could put in another set of double curly braces here and we could say triggered by and then an equal sign. And then the character who triggered the reaction is called the instigator. So we can say at curly brace instigator underscore name closing curly brace. And so now if we copy this, scoot it out of the way, paste it in here. And this all wants to be on one line, so it works properly. We'll save the changes. 
Jump back to the token layer. Now when we move over the trap, there we go. We see it was triggered by Ronia. So we've successfully gotten the name of the token that triggered the reaction. We can also do stuff like that with the reaction token itself. So let's go here. Let's jump back into the GM layer and let's set the name of this token to be Scythe Trap. And we'll save the changes. And bringing back our notepad window here, instead of the name being a hard-coded value of Scythe Trap, what I'm going to say is at open curly brace token underscore name closing curly brace. And now when we copy this, tuck it out of the way, open this up again, paste that code in, save the changes, and now Ronya moves over, and it says Scythe Trap here. Okay, so let's tweak that real quick. I'm going to call this Scythe Trap Triggered. Save the changes. And now, there we go, Scythe Trap Triggered. So we can get both the instigator name and the trigger token name and use that. Now there are a couple of other properties available to you besides the name. You can also get the IDs of both the instigator and the trigger token. And so that's just at instigator underscore ID and at token underscore ID. So if you want to use those, you can. Now why would you want to use those? Well, let's say we wanted to have Ronia automatically make her deck save. So what we could do there is we put in another set of double curly braces here for our template and we could say save equals and then your saving throw is going to be 1d20 plus whatever your dex modifier is. So in Ronia's case, if we alt double click and open this up, her dexterity modifier is stored in an attribute called at dexterity mod. So if we wanted to access that property normally, what we'd say is at Ronia pipe dexterity mod. And then if we copy this and run it, we can see, okay, we got a two. So that is correct because that's Ronia's dex mod. Okay, so what we're going to do is instead of saying Ronia here, we're actually going to copy and paste in instigator ID. So what we're doing here is we fetch the ID of the token that initiated the reaction, so that'll be Ronia, and then we grab that token's dexterity mod. Now the important thing to know here is this syntax, dexterity mod, is going to be different from character sheet to character sheet. I'm using the 2014 version of the character sheet. The 2024 version of the character sheet, it may not be called Dexterity Mod. You'll want to look at that sheet if that's what you're using. Similar deal if you're playing Pathfinder, it will probably be called something different. Or if you are playing Call of Cthulhu, it will be something different from the others. So just look at your character sheet, figure out what the appropriate attribute is, and then use that in this syntax. So now that we've gotten this written, we're going to copy this and we're going to paste it right in here. So we're going to say, all right, we will roll our d20, we will add our instigator's dexterity mod, and then that will give us our final output. So let's copy this. Let's hide Ronia's sheet. Let's tuck away our notepad window, go back to the GM layer, open this up. We're going to paste in our new code, save the changes. Okay, and now let's move Ronia over. And there we go, we have our attack, we have our damage, there's our save, and we can see we're rolling 1d20 and adding 2, which is Ronia's dexterity modifier, and we're saying triggered by Ronia. Okay, so this is cool, but right now what we're doing is having our token contain all of the text that we want to roll. Let's say that we would rather make this into a reusable macro so that we don't have to always be typing this same code over and over again into every Scythe Trap token that we want to make. So what I'm going to do is copy this. Let's go over to the Collections tab here. We'll make a new macro. And we're going to call this macro Scythe Trap. And we're going to paste in that code. We'll save the changes. Okay, so that's in there now. So now let's tuck away our notepad window. Let's go back to the GM layer. And instead of all this, what we're going to do instead is put in a hash mark and then the name of our macro. And it's going to be exactly the way it's written here. So capital S in Scythe, capital T in Trap. Save that. And now let's move Ronia over the token. There it goes. The Scythe Trap has been triggered, calling the macro. 
Okay, now like I mentioned earlier, you can also use mod commands in the send to chat reaction. And I'm just gonna do a real simple example of this because this video is getting too long as it is. So real basic example, let's jump back to the GM layer here, open up our token. And instead of scythe trap, I'm gonna use a real simple token mod command. Uh, token mod comes to us from the arcane scriptomancer himself, the Aaron. And you just wanna make sure that you've installed token mod into your game. Basically what we're gonna say here is token mod set, and I'm gonna say status markers blue. And basically what this is gonna do is put a blue mark on Ronia's token when she moves over this trigger token here. And maybe you wanna do that so you know that a character has ventured through a particular hallway or something like that. So I'm gonna say save changes, and now when I move Ronia's token over this mark, boom, there it goes, she's got the blue marker on her. So now if I just take that off real quick, we go again, and it's back on. So very easy for you to run not only macros and die rolls, but also mod commands as well. And again, mods do require you to have a pro account. And if you've never installed mods before, just pop over to your game's settings page, go to mod API scripts, and then in this drop down here, search for the mod you're looking for. In our case, it's called token mod. So you'd start typing token mod and then it would pop up. Like I said, I've already got it installed here. But the upshot is you can send pretty much any type of command that you would normally type in the Roll20 chat and have it automatically trigger when one character passes over that target token. When a character passes over that triggering token. So there you have it, Roll20's send to chat reaction in action. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing. And until next time, folks, happy gaming.